There have been several times when superstition and mass hysteria have swept through the lands of America and caused great sadness. Possibly one of the most well-known events is that of the Salem Witch Trials. Yet, while most people at least know the name, many might not know the specific events that led to one of the earliest tragedies in America's history. It was in 1692 that three girls from Salem Village, in what is now known as Danvers, Massachusetts, began to scare their parents. The children awoke, convulsing, screaming obscenities, and finally falling into trances before they could be awakened. Now, this was a time when medicine and diseases weren't as well understood, and superstition was rampant within the colonies. The village doctor was called for and examined all three girls, yet no medical reason for their affliction could be found. Because of this, there was only one logical explanation for the girls' behavior. They were afflicted by the powers of Satan, who had obviously infiltrated the Puritan community. Now, the idea that witches who had been granted their power from communion with Satan was nothing new within Europe. And as colonists came over to the New World, they brought this belief in superstition of the supernatural with them. It is possible that the belief that the witches were among them would have stopped with these three girls, but more began to exhibit similar symptoms within the community, which could only mean that the forces of evil were now openly attacking the simple community of Salem. It was at this time that the newly afflicted began to accuse people. Of course, no one of any well standing was accused. The first three witches were a homeless beggar, an elderly woman, and a Caribbean slave named Tatuba. Once again, things might have stopped there. But as is usually the case with hysteria, things began to snowball even further. The three witches were brought before the magistrates to stand trial for their accusations. As is the case for a time when there was no television, the courtroom was packed with the whole village wanting to see what would happen to these brides of Satan. Two of the women would deny any claims that they had communed with the Dark Lord, but it was Tatuba who confessed to her actions. Not only did she plead guilty to her own crimes, but she proclaimed that she did not work alone and the other witches were within the community. It is now believed that she confessed with the hopes of getting leniency and that she pointed the villagers' anger to the other witches to take away some of the hate from her. Of course, this sent a panic throughout the village, and suddenly there was a myriad of accusations against others who were supposedly linked to the devil. Yet now the accusations weren't simply leveled at the lower tiers of the village, but at those with good standing in the eyes of the church and the village elders. The first and most prominent within the community was Martha Corey, a woman with good standing in the church. A group was sent to her home to question her, and the woman's response was enough that she was placed under arrest. The records show that she of course refused any idea that she was colluding with the Dark Lord, and merely pointed out that the village was acting out of fear and irrational superstition. If there was one thing history has taught us though, is that you never point out when someone is acting irrational when they are hunting for witches, because they assume you're a witch. The accusation in the trials against the witches became so prevalent that the governor of Massachusetts was forced to appoint a special court with which to try them. It was in June of 1692 that the court declared its first ruling and convicted Bridget Bishop to be hanged for being a witch and working alongside Satan to destroy the village of Salem. The idea that the Salem witches were burned at the stake was actually a misconception. While most European witch hunts usually ended with burnings, most of the witches in America were hanged. Over the next three months, 18 more people were hanged for being witches, while seven more would never even have a chance to see the noose and would instead die in jail due to poor conditions. Finally, towards the end of the year, sanity would return to the village, and support for these witch hunts would begin to end. Many people began to see them for what they were, an unjust death for those who were in fact innocent. Those who were held prisoner for their crimes would be released, and the families would be pardoned, with restitutions paid for losses that they had incurred. But what did occur that first led to these strange symptoms that afflicted several girls within the village? A scientific study that took place in the 70s pointed to ergot fungus, which can be found growing on rye and wheat. This fungus, when ingested in large quantities, can cause many symptoms that were reported in the Salem Witch Trials. With these events having taken place so long ago, however, it is impossible to tell whether this is actually what happened, but it is a possibility. Beyond this possible medical reason, it is also believed that several of the afflicted were just acting. Many reports indicated that the accused were not well liked by some of the families due to past grievances. 
It was possible that some people used this mass hysteria for their own personal gain and to get some semblance of revenge for past wrongs. Or you know, witches. The Salem witch trials are a dark spot in history of early New England and American history. Unfortunately, it would not be the last time that mass hysteria would cause great pain in our history. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing to the Tales of Earth channel. You can also find us on Instagram and Twitter at Tales of Earth. We appreciate your support and appreciate you continuing to watch our videos. Thank you.